Welcome to Michael's Mailbox. Do you like that? Uh, yeah, love it. Mate. Yeah, love hey everyone, it. It's, it's Joanne. Michael. From Bullion. Where's the sign? Bullionnow.com.au. Selling you the best bullion bars and coins. Yep, shipped to you worldwide from Melbourne in Australia. It's Michael's Mailbox. Uh, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Um, this is because... Um, we seem to be getting quite a lot of comments on YouTube and neither Joe myself or myself are getting time to respond to them all and I'm getting a guilty complex over it. <laughs> so we thought that maybe we could uh, every so often pick one of the more uh, popping videos that seems to be getting a lot of responses and scroll through um, scroll through the, the comments and comment on the comments, um, hopefully answer some questions that are on there. Um, some of it, like uh, some of it, I wouldn't say it's targeted, but we'll probably pick some of the bigger topics that are coming up or some of the more common topics, themes that are coming up so we can hopefully knock them on the head yep. um, with one comment rather than having to type the same thing and over then, and over and again. And then we can cut and paste this video <laughs> into the comment. <laughs> yeah, um, right. And what would be the most popping off video currently? Well, after the weekend, the uh, 1000 ounce Perth Mint Unboxing Ooh, seems to be going off like a frog wee. in a sock. Like a frog in a sock. <laughs> Nearly 8,000 views in less than 48 hours and about 300 comments. Yes, I keep um, sharing it. It's good. It's really good. And it's yeah. stimulating some fantastic discussion. All right, let's go. So, which is great. All right, so we start off with the witty banter. That's from us. Um, that's the quickest sale. This is from the Mad Jarrell. This is the quickest sale of 1,000 ounces of silver, I reckon, gone in under two hours. Bullion now's clientele is not mucking about. It did go really quickly, actually, but we only listed the one on the website, although I note, did note that we sold two over the weekend, so someone else has dropped in somehow, and then we've just sold another one through the store. But, um, yeah, they are moving relatively qu quickly. Um, that nose rub, 109, is so satisfying after the corona has vanished in Australia. Do I rub my nose? Sorry, that was completely done absentmindedly. Ah, rebellion is the answer. What did the Perth Mint offer you to do this? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely, no one offers, other than Bullion Now, no one sponsors these videos or offers us anything for it. If you would like to sponsor a video, get in touch with Please us. Please give us money. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be good. So, uh, I'll, uh, are there, are there any, re any, re th any replies to that at all? Uh, that one. Let's have a look. They have them only for the big boys. They are slowing, slow rolling them out. No idea. Can't comment. Wouldn't know who they're offering them to. They offered them to us. And I thought about it for all of about one microsecond and said, absolutely. Mm. Um, Midnight Gardener. Look, uh, look at this great thousand ounce bar and think to myself, you're going to need a bigger vault. Yeah, tell me about it. Um, he finally gets to opening it at 5.22. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> That was a bit of a disaster, wasn't it? Next time, um, <laughs> we'll, we will bring the power drill from the other office. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in the vid, you mentioned cash out of an allocated that's taking profit or loss in a position. A lot of people like me don't cash out but convert to allocated. So Perth Mint don't get an oversupply of silver. Yeah, that's true. Um, they actually had to make my bar and legally assign it to me. Yes, that, that's correct. They do, but I, I can't comment on how, Bully, how Perth Mint runs it. The way Bully now would run it was if you wanted... We backed with a thousand ounce bar, for example. You said you wanted your kilo bar out. We'd, we'd take a kilo bar out of the shop, but that puts the um, unallocated position one kilo long, so we'd actually have to pull it out of there. Um, and yeah, it's an easy changeover between the shop, you're right, in the allocated circumstance or the taking of physical. It was more a reference to if you're taking it out in cash, because obviously if you remove it in cash, then we are left, in our case, or Perth Mint would be very similar, you're left then with a long physical position that you then need to liquidate to bring yourself back to a neutral position. Because all of us base all the bullion, a lot of the bullion stores, I shouldn't say all, a lot of bullion stores, a lot of refineries, they try and run at a neutral hedge position with intolerances. Um, so as we buy, we try and sell, and as we sell, we try and buy, that type of thing. doesn't work as cleanly as I'm making out, but... Near enough. Um, I heard Perth Mint is selling 1,000 ounce bars from China. No idea. Um, no doubt Perth Mint sent these out to you make it look like they actually have silver bars in stock. I'm not sure how that works because if they send them to us then they no longer have them in stock. But anyway, I'm sure there's a logic to that. Um, they melted down the Chinese bars to make these. Okay, there, there is, and I'll admit to having flicked through some of these um, at a cursory level, there's a real push on Chinese bars and I'm not sure... Um, the exact reference on this, whether people are claiming they're fake bars or whether they're worried about point of origin. Um, no one... 
The, the Stacker's classic comment to us in the store is, I don't care what it is, silver is silver. Mm. Um, we don't care what's stamped on the front. No one has yet asked me where the silver comes from because I actually wouldn't be able to answer that one. Um, it's like which, as, which which country was it mined? Where, yeah, where was it mined from? Mined here, sent to there, processed somewhere else. Like, what's the true point but, of origin? I mean, what's the? It could be the, the silver could have been around someone's neck for the last twenty years. Like, how long was the silver in the ground for before that country became a country? Uh, do you know what I mean? Like, was it? I, I don't know where we draw the line on I mean? point of origin on this. Yeah. And look, I'm not trying to downplay. It. I'm not trying to make a flippant comment here. What I'm trying yeah. to say is either silver is silver, and it doesn't matter where it comes from. Or you're saying it's fake. Well, look, 1,000-ounce bars, 99 out of every 100,000-ounce bars, and yeah, I'm making this up. I don't have any hard stats to prove that. But the majority of 1,000-ounce of bars are industrial bars, and they go for melting down. If you supplied one fake 1,000-ounce bar, your business is done. Yeah, yeah. It is never going to function again. This is a very small industry when it comes to 1,000-ounce bars. Um, you do it once and once only You're before done. you would never exist ever again. Yeah. So from a counterfeit perspective, I doubt it really very much. If you're coming at it, though, from a point of origin perspective, so human rights issues, I don't agree with the way that country does X, uh, I don't agree with what that, that company does Y, um, they're very valid arguments. Um, and it's, I, I noticed that it's heating up in the Bitcoin market at the moment of point of origin. Um, do you take any Bitcoin or do you only buy virgin Bitcoins where you can prove where it's, where it's point of origin, where it was generated from? Um, I think that's going to become a hot debate in the future. Um, we can't, I can't, I can prove that this is 100% silver. I cannot prove to you point of origin. And again, I don't know where you would because is it mined? Is it recycled? Um, has it been around the traps a few times? Um, was it mined in one area and processed in another country? I, I can't answer those questions. Um, and I, I doubt very much Perth Mint could, um, although they would have more tracking than I would. Um, so it depends on what your comment is with this Chinese bar thing, where you're coming from. Think about it a bit logically. Take the emotion out of it. Decide if you're looking for point of origin because you want to know um, from a human rights perspective or whether you're looking at is it counterfeit. And I'll guarantee you even Chinese bars aren't counterfeit because they would last once in a thousand ounce sense. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about buying a silver chain off, off one of the websites, um, that's mm -hmm. a completely different discussion altogether. Or and we've actually released um, fake versus real um, videos before. Yeah, the, on, Perth, on the Perth Mint Gold Bars. Yeah. yeah, I'll put a link above now to that. Yeah, so and that's absolutely a, a thing. So again, put it in context, look at what you're looking at. And in fact, Joe and I were just talking before. What we're going to do is take one of those um, <laughs> one of those thousand ounce bars, and we'll probably do it in the wooden crate. We won't even open the wooden crate, and we're going to cut it in half, um, and we'll do it under video, so you can see what is actually in there, and we'll XRF the living daylights out of it. Yeah. So um, yeah, stay tuned for that one. I still haven't worked out the logistics of it, yeah. but uh, if we can, we will, and uh, we'll release that to YouTube. Um, all right. So what else have we got here? Uh, very odd that Bullion now would reply to your comment in such a way. Did we even... We have, oh, okay. I don't, I'm not sure what they're referencing, that one. Uh, last time I checked, people were not cashing out of their unallocated accounts. They were asking for delivery and getting rejected or pushed away. Um, okay, I'd like to tackle this one a little bit. And you've got to remember, I'm dealing from Bullion Down's perspective. I can comment on what I'm viewing from inside the industry in relation to Perth Mint, but I absolutely don't speak on behalf of Perth Mint and I can't comment on their procedures. We're a customer. We, we are absolutely. We're a wholesale a, customer. There's no yeah. affiliation and there's no backroom deals. There's no, no. all that stuff. Um, as for people being turned away when they are claiming back they're unallocated, um, my only comment on that would be, if you are asking for a specific item, I want a Perth Mint one kilo bar and they've got two months production ahead of them, mm. you're going to enter at the back of that two-month production. And I'm not saying they've got a two-month waiting list. Let's be clear, it could be a two-day for all I know. Mm. But, you know, let's say a two-month waiting period. If they're saying, well, we're really sorry, but if you want it in a one-kilo bar, you're going to have to join the end of the queue because there's others ahead of you, mm. then that's fair enough from that perspective. If they, But they need to offer you an alternative. Okay, we can't provide you with a kilo bar, but we can provide you with 
one ounce kangaroos. We can provide you with, I don't know, make up something else, you know, these things, that thing's the other thing. Um, that's different to we can't supply you. If they're saying we can't supply you with silver, end of story, then that is a very serious accusation. If you're saying, well, they said I can't have it, walk out with it straight away in the form that I want, well, production is limited. I don't care what company you are around the world, you can only produce X number of widgets a day. Um, and if you've maxed out those, that production for today, then you can't produce an extra one. I know from our shop perspective, the bars that you see appear on, on YouTube and even those thousand ounce bars, um, they were ordered weeks ago and they arrived last week. Um, our kilo bars, the ones that I'm ordering, that I'm receiving now, they were orders that were placed in late February. So you can see that even, even shops, um, even wholesale customers are having to wait in the queue for X period of time. Um, that's just the way it is. I'm not excusing that. I'm not arguing for or against, but I'm saying that if people are saying, I can't get my stuff, I'm being turned away, I would ask what form they're requesting it in and if they're open to taking, in, in, taking it in other forms. Uh, um, love the unbox videos, thanks. Um, gorgeous to behold, thank you for sharing the video. No stress, we love doing these things, they're a lot of fun. Um, the sound of it rotating against the table is confidence inspiring. Maybe also in the table. Yeah, I was actually a little, I made sure I was over the leg to make sure that the weight was going directly to the ground. Um, silver lover will have a doorstop in heaven made of silver. I think that's a great idea. Um, the bar is stamped 2014. Don't know, I'd have to go and check the, um, the stamp on that. I didn't notice it. Um, if I bought that, I sure as hell would like the shipping box. <laughs> yeah, totally agree. I think those boxes look fantastic. Uh, where are we? Scrolling down, scrolling down. Um, where's your glove? Yeah, sorry about that. I'm not wearing gloves on those sorts of things. Uh, um, no doubt Perth Mint send these out to you. I know we've covered that one. I don't know why that reappeared. Awesome bar. Yes, it is. Uh, love your videos. Great. Thanks for that. What a beast. Um, Okay, it seems a bit fishy to me regarding, hang on, this is Dave's Shuffles Briz. Okay, seems a bit fishy to me regarding the timing of the first 1,000 ounce freshly minted PM bar unboxing video just turns up at Bullion now and they are also advertising how their unallocated is 100% backed by silver. They didn't buy those bars to sell to customers but back their unallocated positions. Seems quite convenient for Perth Mint and Bullion now. Okay, let me break this one down a little bit. <laughs> Seems a bit fishy to me regarding the timing of the f first 1,000 ounce freshly minted PM bar unboxing video just turns up at Bullion now. They only turned up last week. We've actually never had, I might stand corrected on this, but I don't think so. We've actually never had Perth Mint 1,000 ounce bars in before. We've, I have never seen them in, in the store. Yeah, I know no. we've had others, yeah, but had other, Perth Mint we haven't. We've never had Perth Mint um, branded 1,000 ounce and bars before. Apparently they're not brand new. Apparently they're 2014, although I have to check that. Yeah. But somebody's saying they saw that on the video. Yeah. Quite possible. Um, and I also advertising how they're unallocated is 100% backed by silver. We've been, we've been advertising that since the first day we offered unallocated because it's the only way we were ever going to offer unallocated was that it was backed. We keep telling people it's backed by 100%, uh, backed by uh, physical silver. Um, yes, we probably mentioned it last week and the week before 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 and, week before and, week before and keep going all the way back. We're going to keep saying it because it's, it's what we do. Uh, they didn't buy these bars to sell to customers. Well, well we it did. appeared on the website. <laughs> one sold on the web, one sold off the web via email. I'm thinking it's via email, although. It may have been a phone call. And we just sold one um, in the store. And we just sold one in the store now. Yeah. I probably won't sell any more um, because one, I want to cut in half, um, like we said, and uh, there's either one or two others. Uh, did we get five or six? I can't remember. Five. Five. So the other one is actually going into our unallocated program. So um, it's also... To be, bit... to be clarify on that, that will go into the unallocated, not to... It might be to swap out hmm. for stuff. It's not to... Uh, back stuff that we've already sold. No, that makes sense. So, I, so, um, so it's, yeah. not like, it's not like there's a big gap in between. We sold no. a thousand ounces of unallocated, and then oh, we had to wait weeks and weeks to get that thousand ounce no. bar into back it. So I was actually having this discussion with someone else earlier this morning. Right. Um, so 
we we allocate a certain amount of silver to sell for unallocated, if that makes sense. So for example, uh, and this is the example I used earlier, um, we've got 100 10 ounce bars in, in stock. Okay, so we say, right, we've got a thousand ounces, let's sell a thousand ounces of unallocated. And we grind through that during the day and a thousand ounces will sell and right, that one's sold, now we need to sort out something else. <clears throat> but those 100 10 ounce bars are sitting in our unallocated. Now, we might run out a week later, a month later, a year later, we might say, well, heck, we've run out of 10 ounce bars in the store. Um, but I know that we've got some 10 ounce bars in the unallocated. Now, we're not gonna just remove them out of the unallocated. Listen to the complete explanation before you jump to conclusions here. So we will say we've got, a th we've got 100 10 ounce bars in unallocated, so 1,000 ounces. I've got this 1,000 ounce bar sitting here, and yes, I always prefer to back the unallocated with the 1,000 ounce bars, because they're the cheapest thing I can get. So, yes, I'm gonna take this 1,000 ounce bar, I'm gonna put it into the unallocated program, and I'm going to remove those 10, correction, those 100, 10 ounce bars out of the unallocated program and allocate them to the shop. Right. So now the unallocated is still backed with the thousand ounces of silver. It's just changed what form it's in, yep. what size it's in, if yep. you like. Yep. And that's why we can offer it at no cost because it allows the shop that flexibility to actually hold stock in there yep. and change it over as the shop requires. So yes, it does change form, not, not metal form, but size form day to day, yep. it may. And when you say no cost, you mean because we sell it at spot price, mm. no premium to the customer when buying. It's just we make our money. Oop. We make our money later on. You're right there, mate. Mm. Uh, we make our money later on when they come to redeem for cash or for physical. Yeah, that's right? correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is this is uh, some comments I've seen personally, and I, I won't talk too much. But um, uh, people are saying, "Ha ha, we're going to." buy you out we're going to buy all the unallocated and then redeem on you on the one day that's a good thing for us mm, absolutely we want, we want that because that's when we actually make money <laughs> is, that, yeah, absolutely. Is, that, is that correct yeah because that it's back one to one i it, we i i pay the premium for whatever we store it in which is why i said i'm going to store it in thousand ounce bars wherever I can because yeah. the premium is far lower on a thousand ounce bar but if you can't than get, on a one ounce coin. But if you can't get thousand ounce bars, you've got to get something. Yeah, and at times, that quite often, there's coins in there, there's bars in there of all, all various sizes. Right. Excuse me, that's fizzy water. It's repeating on me. Right. Um, so, um, yeah, if, if I, I'm funding that premium. So it's actually a cost to me right up until the point where you come in and claim it back. So if we had everyone walk in tomorrow and say, I want my unallocated, Bonus, <laughs> yeah, cool. because oh look, no, it, it's I, I'm being a little facetious there. Um, it, it's not good in that it, it would remove some of the flexibility that I have in storing various items in stock, sure. because I know I can carry that in the unallocated. Yeah, but that's if somebody comes in and says I want to redeem my unallocated. I think fantastic. I can now liquidate that premium. I can actually make the profit out of it, and we can move on from there. So it, it's actually an advantage for us to to do it. Uh, I'm, going it, I'm going to suggest we've maybe got maximum another 10 minutes. Yeah, okay. Suggest. A lot of these are, if I didn't read yours out, it's because a lot of them are kind of repetitive, like this one here. This is very well timed for the Perth Mint. I wonder how many people are in the queue to get their silver. We've already covered that. I, I don't know how Perth Mint production goes. I suspect they've got production issues. They had an excess of 1,000 ounce bars. They offered them to me. I thought for about one nanosecond that I would take delivery of them, and I said, absolutely. I didn't say, well, you know, do you need to turn them into kilo bars for someone? Absolutely not. Right, 521. Okay. Now, this, is one I, this is one I saw earlier. All right, so this is, a, um, this is a quote that someone's doing. So at 521, this is from Christo4, right now there is more supply on the market than there is demand. Oh, that's me. Okay, so he's quoting me saying that, all right. Really, I guess this would explain why you can't buy anything silver for less than $5 US above the COMEX, but I can't comment on US prices. He would also explain why the largest US dealers have virtually no inventory along with pre-selling silver a month out. Oh yeah, and it would also explain the huge drawdown of physical stock out of COMEX and the silver ETF, sorry, SLV ETF vaults. Um, there's more there. How many pages does it go for? Ooh, strike. Um, it would also explain why the Mexican mint has stopped production. Okay, all right, so it's going along saying that the overseas mints are out of stock. Absolutely. Um, we can't get any overseas stock at all. 
Um, I'd be really interested to see what I said at, let's call it up, at 521. Let's get a video up, uh, so hang on here. Hey there everyone, it's Joe and Michael. What did you say, 521. So let's, let's start just before that. Go to the market. And it's a basic supply and demand. So that one. It's gone for an advert. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. We should get rid of the ads. No. Sorry about that. Yep. Um, got five seconds to run. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, so I'll take it back a little bit so we don't get the interference of the advert. Actually, drive the price on the world market. Okay. So. You're actually causing the Perth to go long. Okay. So, so this is an example I'm giving. Excess product onto the market. Yep. And it's a basic supply and demand. So. That will actually drive the price on the world market because Perth Mint are slightly larger than us. Yeah. Um, and obviously they're not the only refinery that does this sort of stuff, but they'll release their excess stock yep. onto the world market, which basic supply and demand. So now there's more supply on the market than there is demand. Right. And um, so they'll reduce the price. Yeah, okay. All right. So in context, that pulling one sentence out, even that's only half a sentence. Pulling half a sentence out of a 30 second example is taking it out of context. So what I'm doing there is I'm giving an example of what happens when someone claims they're unallocated back from um, Perth Mint uh, and taking it out as cash. So what I've said, I didn't say right now, I said so there is more supply um, was the comment that I made there. So what I'm saying is they've liquidated their unallocated, they've taken the cash out of the system, they've walked away, Perth Mint's now long, so they are now unloading that silver onto the market to get back to a neutral position. In a hypothetical situation. In a hypothetical right. situation. So the, and a lot of, as I said earlier, a lot of refiners and uh, retailers and all that try and target a basically a neutral position. We hedge every day, all day, as much as we possibly can. And it's just part of the hedging. So you, you're pulling it out of context, entirely pulling it out of context. But it's also got nothing to do with the overseas supply. So the, the US dealers are overcommitting. Absolutely, they're selling stuff they don't have. They're selling more stuff than the refineries and mints over there can produce, which is why they're pulling a hell of a lot out of Australia as well, which is why Australia is suffering from production issues across the board. And I'm not targeting any one refiner or um, producer there. Um, I, it's the same. I, I actually have no idea why the Mexican Mint has stopped their production. I've never looked into it. I just know that I can't get Libertad's now. Um, I don't know um, anything about Endeavour Silver, silver holding, withholding half a million ounces in the first quarter. Don't know. I can't comment on, on any of that Comex type stuff. Um, my answer would be um, prove it. Like, show us the documentation. It's great to spout these things, but. Um, no one seems to be backing these things up particularly. It's all I heard and this guy and that person and on this one, rather than, you know, here's a quote from, here's the direct quote from the COMEX, here's the direct quote from, this is the, it doesn't even have to be a direct quote from the COMEX. I mean, you can look at how much silver they're selling and you can draw from that quite clearly. And again, I'm not backing this up, but you can quite clearly show that they are selling X number of paper contracts versus physical. Um, that's fairly clear. But as to what happens after that, I don't think is, I think it's as clear as mud. Um, alrighty, so do we want to do any others or have I bored everyone stupid? <laughs> Could be a little from column A, a little from column B. Are there any more uh, noteworthy ones there? Do you just want to quickly um, go through? No, it's basically been, um, basically people are saying it looks great. Um, and a lot of people are saying um, they're worried about the Chinese silver, which we've covered, I think and also the, the silver squeeze, which I've kind of dodged around a little bit and I've probably trodden on a few toes if I'm completely honest. But um, yeah, I, I think we've covered it to death. Um, what I would say to tidy it up is look at people's reason why they're pushing a certain barrow. I'm a bullion dealer. You need to understand that what I'm telling you comes with the flavor of bullion dealer, both positive and negative, absolutely. Uh, refer back to Warren Buffett. Never ask your hairdresser if you need, I think he says barber, never ask your barber if you need a haircut. You're asking a bullion dealer if there's a short supply. Absolutely, you've got to buy it right now. There's a short supply. Or you're talking about um, other people that are making comments. Look at why they're making comments. Are they trying to stimulate um, feedback for their, for their own website? Are they trying to cause 
uh, the price to go up because they own a large chunk of silver? Are they causing the price to go down because they're about to come into the market? Have a look at what they're saying, why they're saying. Doesn't mean they're necessarily wrong, but it does mean that it comes with a certain flavour. And that's it. Right, fair enough. Okay, that is the uh, first and probably not the only Michael's <laughs> Mailbox. And uh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, Let us know if you want us to do more of these or if this bored you stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Have we just wasted 25 minutes of your life? Uh, but look, we thought we'd give it a go. And uh, again, we could just copy and paste this for all the sort of frequently commented uh, yeah. YouTube comments. Um, okay, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Head over to bullionnow.com.au. As always, that's it from me. And from me too. I'll see you soon. See ya.